Hi everyone, it's Michael. So it's been a while since I've done a lesson on a general topic in geometry instead of solving a competition problem. So here I am going to do a lesson on spiral similarities. Uh, so for those of you that have watched uh, some of my more recent videos, um, I've used this a few times uh, and it comes in handy uh, pretty frequently. So first I'm going to start out by defining what a spiral similarity is. So it's the, a rotation of all the points in the plane about a certain point, followed by a scaling or a dilation about that same point. So in this example, if we look at the hexagon A, B, C, D, E, F, a spiral similarity about point G would take it to the smaller hexagon. And that's because we can first rotate it about point G to get this other hexagon, which is the same size. And then we can scale it about point G. And uh, then we get the, the small hexagon, A double prime, B double, B double prime, et cetera, all the way up to F double prime. So there's a spiral similarity that takes this hexagon to the smaller hexagon. So I'm gonna just show it to you in motion. So first you have this hexagon, then you rotate it about point G. And then you do a homophony or a scaling, dilation, all words for the same thing. And then you get the smaller hexagon. So a spiral similarity, technically, it's done to all the points in the plane. But if you look at just what it does to this hexagon, it takes this hexagon to the smaller one. All right, so it's not clear yet why this is a useful idea. Uh, but hopefully by the end of the video, you'll see why. All right, so first I'm going to prove um, a fairly basic fact about spiral similarities. So um, what happens if a spiral similarity about A takes the segment BC to B prime C prime? Um, well, actually, okay, so first uh, we take the segment BC, we rotate it about point A to get B double prime C double prime. And then we scale it, sorry, we scale it about point A to get B prime C prime. So we have a spiral similarity about A takes B C to B prime C prime. And the claim is that triangle A B C has to be similar to A B prime C prime. And it's quite obvious. So I'm just gonna draw in the segments. Um, so really it's just a one line proof. So the triangle A B C uh, it's congruent to A, B double prime, C double prime. So this should just be an A here. There shouldn't be the, the two primes. And that's similar to A, B prime, C prime. Uh, that's clear because uh, homophony takes uh, one, one of those triangles to the other. So it's clear that triangle ABC has to be similar to A, B prime, C prime. All right, so that's the first basic fact. But now I'm gonna prove a non-trivial fact um, only slightly non-trivial, but extremely useful in competition problems. Okay, so if a spiral similarity about A takes BC to B prime C prime, then there's another spiral similarity taking about A that takes BB prime to CC prime. Okay, so as I just mentioned, the first fact that we're given uh, it's equivalent to saying that triangle ABC is similar to triangle A, B prime, C prime. I'm sorry, this should just be an A here. Um, and of course, the converse is also true. It's not hard to see that. Um, but how do we show this other fact that a different spiral similarity at A takes B, B prime to C, C prime? And that's the same as saying that triangle ACC prime is similar to triangle ABV prime. So I'm going to show you that here. Um, it's a very simple proof um, just involving side angle side similarity. All right, so what I'm going to do is I want to show that the triangles ABB prime and ACC prime are similar. And so first I'm going to show that uh, they share a common angle. So angle B prime AB is equal to angle B prime A C prime plus angle C prime A B. And that's equal to angle uh, B A C um, because B prime A C prime 
is the same as BAC, since we know those two triangles are similar, and plus uh, C prime AB. And then if you combine these two, uh, angle BAC plus angle C prime AB, uh, that's the same as angle C prime AC. So if you look at the triangles ABB prime and ACC prime, uh, the angle um, around A is the same in both those triangles. And then it's also not hard to show that the sides surrounding that angle are in the same ratio. Uh, so I'm going to do that right here. Um, so we know these two triangles are similar from what I showed before. Um, and so that means that AB over AC is equal to AB prime over AC prime. So if we just cross multiply, that's the same as saying AB over AB pr prime is equal to AC over AC prime. And so if you look at the two triangles ABB prime and ACC prime, they share a common angle at A and the sides surrounding that angle are in the same ratio because AB over AB prime is equal to AC over AC prime. And so those two triangles have to be similar by side angle side similarity. So this is a, an extremely useful fact in Olympiad geometry problems, um, that if we know triangle ABC is similar to AB prime C prime, then we get another similarity, which is that ABB prime is similar to ACC prime. Uh, and of course, that's equivalent, as we've said before, to saying that a spiral similarity centered at A takes BB prime to CC prime. So I'm going to draw in those two uh, segments, BB prime and CC prime. So you can see uh, here from the diagram, it looks like uh, triangle ABB prime is similar to triangle ACC prime. Uh, so basically, these similar triangles come in pairs. And very often in Olympiad geometry problems, knowing this allows you to avoid um, otherwise clunky algebra. So you could just see from one similar triangle, you get another, and you can bypass all the algebra in between. Uh, that's kind of what I did in the last problem on my channel. All right, so this is the, the first main fact about uh, spiral similarities. Uh, there's one more key fact, though, so, so I'm going to show that to you next. Okay, so I just rearranged the diagram slightly because it makes it easier for this problem. Um, so suppose we have a spiral similarity, again, taking BC to B prime C prime. Now I'm going to let the line BC intersect B prime C prime at D. Okay, so in this case, D it lies on one of these two segments, but not the other. But this doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It could be that it lies on both segments. It could be that it lies on neither segment. Um, so the way I've arranged it here, D lies on B prime, C prime. All right. And then we want to show that A is the intersection of the circumcircles of B, B prime D and C, C prime D. Okay. So... Another way to say this is that ABDB prime and ACC prime D are both cyclic. We want to prove both of those facts. But if we can prove one, then the argument for the other is very similar. And this is actually quite an easy angle chase. Um, so I'm going to work it out. Um, we know, like I've said before, triangle ABC is similar to triangle AB prime C prime. Sorry, I keep writing A prime when it should just be A. Um, uh, but from that similarity, uh, we, we can do a fairly easy angle chase to show uh, that A, B, D, B prime is cyclic. So we have angle A, B prime, D is equal to A, B prime, C prime. And that's equal to angle A, B, C since we know that these two triangles are similar. So if angle AB prime D is equal to angle ABC, uh, that means that this quadrilateral AB prime DB has to be cyclic because this angle is equal to uh, the exterior of the opposite angle, which is angle ABC. Okay, so AB prime DB has to be cyclic. 
and then we can do a very similar argument to show that a c c prime v is cyclic. Uh, so I'm going to write that out here. Uh, so we have angle a c prime d is equal to angle a c prime b prime, and that's equal to angle a c b since these two triangles in the beginning that I mentioned are similar. And so just from that, if a c prime d is equal to a uh, c b. Um, which is equal to angle ACD, of course, then AC prime uh, DC is cyclic. So I think I wrote these letters in a different order, but um, you get what I mean? Okay, so basically that means A is the intersection of those two circumcircles, and that solves the problem. And like I mentioned, in this case, D is on B prime C prime and not segment BC. But there are other configurations. For example, if I, um, so this is what I said, A has to be the intersection of those two circumcircles. Um, but if we move, uh, so I move the figure around a little bit. So now B, C and B prime, C prime intersect at point D. And the theorem is still true in that case. Um, A is the intersection of those two circumcircles that I mentioned. Um, and there's one more configuration where D doesn't lie on either segment. Um, I haven't um, done this in the video, but I encourage you to try it on your own. Um, that's also a very common configuration. Uh, one more fact I should mention, uh, the converse of this is also true. So if A is the intersection of these two circumcircles, then there is a spiral similarity centered at A that takes BC to B prime C prime. Um, so it's not too hard to show that converse. Um, and another thing worth mentioning is that there's always a unique um, sp center of spiral similarity. So A is the only point um, that takes BC to B prime C prime. So this is a super useful co um, concept and I encourage all of you uh, who do math Olympiads to learn it. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, thanks, everyone.